So after rolling the piece out on a flat surface, uh, if you look at the cane, the tube cane at eye level, ideally with a light source behind it, you should be able to see um, where the warping occurs. Quite often it's on one of these ends or both of these ends. If it's on one of the ends, then you want to mark that end so that when you cut this down to size, you will not use this area here. On this piece of cane, this end was more warped than that end. So I'm marking that. Um, so when I split this out, there'll be some markings on, you know, on this end. And then when I cut it to size lengthwise, I'll know not to use that. So cane has certain imperfections in it that uh, we want to avoid. One of them is a place where a branch has grown out. And that's what we see here in this piece. Uh, the grain here is like what you get in a knot, a knot on a piece of wood. It's very hard. So splitting a section out that includes this branch um, will not make a good piece of cane. You don't want to use that. So mark it out like I have on this piece with a Sharpie and mark the whole axis there so that you will not use that piece. Okay, I'm going to show you how I split cane and how I select cane for uh, processing. Uh, this method uh, I learned from Arlen Fast who um, has made this wonderful radius gauge for um, sizing the canes. The first thing you need to do, since a lot of cane dealers don't separate cane by diameter, um, you need to have a, a template like this. You can get this at an art uh, supply store or in an office supply store that has various um, diameters. This, this one is metric. Um, most gouger beds are 25, between 25 and 24 millimeters diameter. It's important to match the uh, piece of cane you're choosing, the diameter of that piece of cane, to the gouger bed so it will um, fit in there. Cane has a memory too, so if you choose smaller diameter tubes, you're going to get a more arched tip opening that will favor high notes. If you choose a larger diameter, you may uh, end up with cane that has a more flat tip opening that will favor low notes. Most bassoon players fall into about the inch diameter or 25 millimeters uh, diameter thereabouts. So I've got my, my 25 millimeter um, circle marked here for myself. And what I'm going to do is size the cane in this hole. And you can see that this piece is pretty close to an inch. It goes in most of the way. Whereas this piece doesn't fit in at all, right? In fact, it's more like a 26, 27 millimeter. That's going to be too big to use. This piece is also interesting. It's important to notice where a branch has uh, left a, a knot in the cane and marked that. So if I were to use this piece, I would not use a piece that was split from this area here because the, the way the cane vibrates is affected by this knot here. It's very hard right here. Um, I may find one or two on this one or on this one. They look good. Oh, there's one right there. Okay, so there's a little, a little place where a branch grew out. So when I split this one out, if I choose it, I'm going to avoid this axis right here. Okay, so I've selected this one though because it was the right diameter. And uh, I'm going to roll it out here, and you're going to see that the cane tends to settle on its widest part. In other words, on top and bottom, it's wider than on the sides. Um, so it's good to know where that is to begin your process. So um, if you take a gouged piece of cane like this and mark the center line, because we need to have the diameter be exactly right where the tip will be. That's the most sensitive part uh, back here, and back here it doesn't matter so much. So to start off, we want to place the, 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 this marking piece on that wide part right there, okay? And what I do then is to mark on both sides of that center point like this. And then connect those two, leaving this space here open. That will be my first radius try. Okay, so I'm going to try the radius right here and see what I get. Okay, so I'm going to size the cane now by choosing one of these uh, um, cutouts to put the cane through and see what size is the closest fit. So um, 
25 millimeters is a really good uh, average um, gouger bed diameter, so we want to choose cane that fits in that um, cutout if possible. Um, and this piece of cane is probably just a little bit wider in the middle, but it fits in enough that I'm going to use it. So um, I'm going to orient it uh, so that the widest part that was on the on the on the contacting the granite top uh, fits fits on the bottom. Okay, so we're going to do that. And then the next thing I want to do is take the um, sharpie and I'm going to mark the four compass points on there. So the best way to do that is to hold it right at the edge like this and mark there, 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 and there. Now. Um, if I split this way, you will get a piece of cane that the gouge of which looks like a hockey stick. So it'll be kind of long and then it'll have a curve on the end. It's not symmetrical. We want symmetry in our reed making. So the way, to, the way to fix that is to rotate 45 degrees like this and then mark the proper spot and do a split. So I'm just going to mark one quadrant so I don't confuse myself. And make, and make a split there. So that'll be my first split. Okay, so now we're going to split this piece out that I marked. And uh, I don't like to use a cane splitter because I may not use all four pieces I split out. And if I were splitting a smaller diameter tube, I may only get three pieces out of it. So if my splitter has four blades, um, that limits my, uh, my, my choices somewhat. So I like to use something really heavy to cut this out with because the cane is very stiff and thick. And uh, if you use something heavy, you won't need to run it all the way down on the table and perhaps damage your, your countertop or what have you. So a little cleaver like this works beautifully. Um, notice I'm not putting it across, halfway across. I'm just contacting one part of the diameter. And then uh, just any sort of hammer, like that. And if I face it this way, you can see where I'm splitting it down. And you can see the split has gone all the way down, so I don't need to go any farther, and I can take this out. Next, I'll find the other mark I put in there, and do the same thing, and the piece should come out. So, there's our first piece. The next thing we need to do is find where the straightest part of this piece is. So, putting it on your, your granite countertop or a plate of glass, is a really good way to see if there's a little rock between the four corners on a piece this long that's not terrible um, you're not going to use this whole piece probably you know 120 millimeter length it's probably only going to be about this long um, so it will probably uh, end up being pretty straight the thing I also want to check is the diameter again and so you can use your template here to choose again the, that proper diameter and see again if you look straight through like this See if there's any light shining under the cane when you do this. Um, I think it, I, I'll, I'll uh, just say, I think this piece, piece uh, fits in there perfectly. So this is a definitely a usable piece. So you can see here where I've, I've cut out this section. And now what I'm going to do is um, make sure it's rotated 45 degrees. Um, and I'm going to mark here and see if I can get a good section out of this area right here, from here to here. That'll be my next split. So I'll go right ahead and split that one out. And the same thing here. Um, I'm going to I'm going to rock this on the table to see whether I've got a uh, you know a straight piece. Okay. So now we're going to cut the piece down to size. So what we've got here is a a guillotine that is 120 millimeter length and uh, you can see over here that I've marked my center line here which is approximately where the fold of the, of the reed is going to be and also I've marked out where the most warped part of each section is so I'm going to be sure to cut that part out so I just feed it into the guillotine like this fit it in the guide and then chop like that and then we've got our 120 millimeter piece <laughs> ¶¶